Yeah. <laughs> right now we have Miss Sharia Quarles in the building. Yes, Ms. sir. Miss Cherry on top of <laughs> Youth Center Incorporated. Hey, everybody. Hey. How y'all doing? How you doing? Wonderful. How you doing? It's raining outside. Yeah. Yeah, it's nasty outside. Y'all gotta instead of, here, man. Like okay. You know instead of baby making weather, man, it's cold outside and it's raining. Let's not get back on the baby. <laughs> I'm just saying. You, you mentioned the weather. I mean, I don't want no. I, I just, I just, have, you know what? God just gave me a beautiful daughter. Hey, you know what? And I love her to death. But hey, I don't man. want no more kids. Hey, a wife, you say she want another one. But it's on me. And I'm done shooting up all clubs. I'm done. Mm. Miss Cherry, how are you doing? Back to you again. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Actually, I'm great. Great. So tell me about your nonprofit. Okay, well, first I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I'm from Acres Homes, 44 Slim Thug, where, where you at? Holla at me anyway. 44 <laughs> Acres Homes, right here in Houston, born and raised. Um, my mom, school teacher, 30 years. My dad, like in and out prison on drugs the whole situation then i had a set of godparents who passed and wife of a church so you take drug addict father hard working mother in the school district and then godparents who like big in religion and big so time you got church the game full right. yes and really that's how the cherry on top started because on the weekends i would be at home my mom's on antoine de soto wilding out while she was working hard then during the week when I'd be in my godparents' house to help raise me, I learned all kind of like business skills, um, how you act here versus here, um, mm -hmm. life skills basically. And then from my father, I learned what to do and what not to do, um, situations with substance abuse. Mm -hmm. So that's how the cherry on top started. I started teaching kids life skills, just going in apartment complex. I started with the apartment complex I grew, grew up in. Google got that 501c3, made it a real organization, a real nonprofit, got people to join and help me, and here we are seven years later. Wow. Okay, seven years later. But before you got there, mm -hmm. what motivated you to do the nonprofit that you did? At first, was you going to do like a for-profit business? What made you go nonprofit? I mean, really, I didn't have, I don't know. I guess it's like a God thing. I just woke up one day, and I was like, okay. This is my purpose. I guess I knew my purpose. I knew it at a young age. When I would hang out with my friends in the hood, because I would go to my godparents' house, I saw the difference. I saw the lack of exposure. I saw how I was a little different because I was exposed to other things. So that's kind of how it started. So I was like, man, I have to show kids it's more than life than our neighborhood and our zip code. So how I'm going to do this? And I need donations, so I'm gonna have to start a nonprofit. I didn't even think of the for-profit side. So how was it that first year? Because I mean, seven years now into the game, I'm pretty sure you just picked up a whole lot of momentum from that first mm -hmm. time. During that first year, what were some of the obstacles that you went through? I guess just, to make people believe in it. I guess to get it out there, the marketing, the advertising, and anything. Really, it was kind of different for me because the first two, one, two, three years. The journey, I think I love the most. Like, it's kind of now that it's a little, it's different now because people are expecting so much. But at the beginning, you on fire. I'm young at this time. I'm 23. I'm in college. I have more reach with people my age who want to do stuff. Like, especially in being in college at TSU, everybody down to do something big, like change the world. We all feeling passionate about changing the world, 23, 24, 25. And... I, I think the only obstacle was the reach, probably marketing, bad marketing, misspelled words on flyers, stuff like that. But I really, I, I enjoy the journey. I like the tough times. I thrive off of that. So who all have you worked with within your organization? Have you worked with any like, oh, yeah. names within? Oh, yeah. Well, Houston Village Foundation, uh, Ahmad, he's a track coach at Eisenhower High School. We did a st STEM event together um, with 97.9 and 102. We did, a, uh, we did a Christmas event together. We had that annually. It's Get Fit Christmas. Um, who else? With the Chambers, with Acres Homes. Um, right now, 
we're getting ready to do some partnerships with some up and coming nonprofits. Mm-hmm. Want to help out with that, and I'm working on doing some things with Eisenhower High School, mm-hmm. where I grew up. The kids that we actually going to take out of the country, I really want to get pick the kids from there. We're, we're definitely going to get into that conversation. Mm-hmm. Oh, just C H E R R I E on top dot org. I'm spelling it out because it's C H E R R I E on top dot org. So go to our website. Everything is on there. Whether you want to volunteer, whether you want to give and donate, whether you want to sign your kids up, everything is on the website. You can follow us on Instagram as well, Cherry on Top Youth Center. So yeah. No, first out of the country. I mean, we didn't do anything right. really small. We have um, life skills to me is mind, body, and soul. So I just like to be out of the box because that's what my godparents were to me. It was out of the box just seeing their lifestyle, how they live. So med- like we meditate with kids. I have a meditation club. We do life skill tours where, say, for example, we'll bring a group of kids here and They'll watch you guys, how you run your business, how you run a radio st- uh, show. We call it simulation. So everything we do is outside the box. So I knew that getting outside of the neighborhood was key because when I got to go to Disney World, I got to travel, get on the plane, or when I went to Africa in college, it changed my life completely. It didn't take some big motivational speech to, to know that I was forever changed to go leave Acres Homes and go somewhere else. So I was like, all right, look, I got to get these kids out of here. And I'm not talking about to Dallas. <laughs> I got to get them. <laughs> we got to get them away because it's going to be life changing. And it's going to allow them to see that, man, it's, this world is big. Speaking so. of your age, because you just mentioned that you went to Africa. And I've heard people say, like, you have to get out of the country mm-hmm. and go to Africa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I want to go to Africa so bad. How uh, was that experience for you? To see, all I can, this is one thing that stuck with me. We were on the bus. It was a group of us. And going through the village and from city to city, we went all over. Um, Just looking at billboards and everybody was black. Like I couldn't, it, it was it was amazing. Like everywhere I turned, when we went to the mall, we was in a crowd, we went to the mall. And the pharmacists, all the stores, it, Every everybody was black, and it was owned by those people, I, and it that was it for me. That's all I needed to see. That man, everybody doing so well. Everybody's so beautiful. Everybody have ownership, and it, everybody's in school, educated. I mean, of course, you had some poor areas, just like anywhere else. But even in the poor areas, those kids would look at you in your eye and speak, even if it wasn't in in. in English, but just to respect, and then I look here in America, and everything is opposite. Like I'm like, man, this 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 doesn't portray who we are. So they don't portray Africa as what it is. No, it's beautiful. Oh, not at all. Beautiful. <laughs> I recommend everybody go. So, so <laughs> yeah, but, like, make sure you good. Okay. <laughs> so tell us a, now. Tell us about the your nonprofit Cherry on Cherry on Top Youth. Mm-hmm. Uh, like you say, you have meditation. You have all, and these are after-school programs you have, or just like on a week, like a weekend thing. We do. Well, our meditation club is actually at Marshall Middle School. We do it at the school on Monday mornings before school, mm-hmm. and then we have weekend events. And then, with as far as the life school t- tours, we do that in the summertime on Saturdays. Where um, anybody from the community, if you go online and you sign up, you can come. And we'll go take, we're taking the kids actually on a tour in Acres Homes. It's actually some African American, it's a, it's a furniture store owned by some African American black people. We're going to take the kids there because look at a furniture store. Black people in the hood owning it. I think that would be amazing for the kids to see that. Because I don't, I don't know anybody that really black that own a furniture store, so it's amazing to me as well. 
So we have that, and then with sports, we call that sports for life. So as we know in our culture and community, we draw the sports, period. So what we do is we draw the kids, you play some football, some basketball, but we teach those life skills. All right, who know about money management? Who know about self-control? Who knows about communication, how we communicate when we angry? So we, it's year-round. And I'm pretty sure that you deal with, uh, I mean, just a lot of issues just with the kids that they go through at home and being able to have that escape, I guess, whenever they come to the programs and things that you provide. Mm -hmm. Because I could just... You know what I mean? Just imagine, especially living in some of these areas where kids, they see so much, you know what I mean? For actually have yeah. somebody breathe a life into them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Tell them that they can do certain things and go mm -hmm. to certain places. I'm surprised you haven't had nobody ask you to move in with you. Move in with me? Yeah, they, but come on, mama. mama no Adopt me. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have. I have, actually. I've had some situations. I've also had some situations with parents upset because of my... um. You were putting a new philosophy in her child's head. Yes, and they're not ready for that yet. Yeah, mm. yeah I've seen that a lot. That influence? That's crazy. Oh, man, I've been through it. Why are you money? giving my child dreams? Exactly. <laughs> what? Seriously. That's, oh, that, yeah. Honestly, without oh, yeah. without saying that, that's really what it is. Why are you giving my child dreams? We, we want, we want my, I want my child to get a remedial job and... Be stuck in the 9 to Exactly, five. exactly. No, wait, check this out. When we took... Our kids in 2017 to uh, Cozumel, mm. I had parents change their mind like two weeks before and say, well, if you can't take us for free, my kid ain't going. Wow. So free trips. To go with free trips. Or I'm, I, I don't wanna, I'm not going to say any names, but I had a situation wow. as well. One of my kids, um, that family was actually homeless. And living out of a van at the time and I was taking the kid and the parent kind of was like well I don't think my child's going to be able to go because I have all these bills can you kind of help me if we if if we could stay at a hotel for a night maybe I can get his birth certificate and all these things I need so he would be able to go this you've already committed to it so it put it put me in a situation and I wanted everything and I wanted him to go so Next thing you know, we dishing off a couple of hundred bucks so you could stay in the room. Then it happened again. Then again. So it's it it it's difficult at times. Mm -hmm. Taking advantage. Yeah. But but it's okay because he I mean, it was worth it at the end of the day. And then I had to put a stop to that. I'm like, look. <laughs> yeah, because I'm pretty sure that would have still probably would still be happening to this day, right? Yeah. Now, if you'd allowed that to happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Make, like it's just a, I actually think it's a powerful organization that you have just taking kids out of the country because some some parents like you like you said can't even take them to Dallas like you said like it's yeah. a small thing can't go to Dallas never left the Austin, city before San Antonio yeah like do you have any how can sponsors get in contact with you because I really feel like that's something we need to help you with for like find a different sponsor or somebody that can like what do you need for your organization really we would love sponsors because. And I always tell people when your business plan, I'm going to say this. When you write your business plan, make sure whatever you put down, you mean it. Because I, I have to go back and change because I remember at the very beginning when I was writing the plan, I said, I'm about the people. I'm for, I'm for the people. I am somebody that can relate to everybody. So 80% of our funding is going to come from the people. 20% of our funding is going to come from sponsors and government and corporate. And just how I wrote it down, we raised seven thousand dollars for our first trip in about thirty and forty days. And it all came from the people. So as far as sponsorships and corporate, um this year I'm really, really, really banking on that. All you have to do is just go to our website, you can contact us, connect at cherryontop.org, email us, connect at cherryontop.org, see how you can be a sponsor. Because if we, I can just get that, that twenty percent, because we've been thriving and like helping our kids by the people. If we get that twenty percent, imagine how much more we can do, how many more kids we could take. So how would you like to expand just your organization itself? Like, mm -hmm. you said you have the meditation in certain different classes. Mm -hmm. Like, what are some things that you feel like you can add to, I guess, make it, like, right now it's just a normal, but to make it into a beast, that some people would say, like, this is the, the powerhouse. Of mm -hmm. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take access. 
assets, really, because we're outreach. I named it Cherry on Top Youth Center because I knew at the end of the day, we need property, we need ownership, we need assets. So really we just need, we need a building. And then of course, uh, another dream of mine is to have a mobile life center. A lot of times, kids in urban community, and poor communities, I can, you can have the YMCA, but you got those kids that don't have transportation. Mm-hmm. Or who parents say, you ain't getting on no bus to go down the street to play basketball. I know what that's like. So how can we cater to those kids? Well, a mobile center. So I wanna convert like a school bus and put those laptops, put all the resources those kids need and drive out and go out to those neighborhoods. And we park it, and they go on and use those resources. So we'll have it mobile, and then we'll have station. So I know that's what's going to take, uh, take, take us to the next level. It's just all a process of getting, a, getting property. Hmm. That's good. And it, uh, if you're just not tuning in, you're still kicking it with Jim Renegade on my 2 k uh, We in with Miss... Cherry. Uh, Cherry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Let me just get you get it correct. Because I messed her name up about 30 times. <laughs> it's all right. Getting the oh, evil eye no. all interview. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you good. No, but but uh, anybody that's listening and want to be a mentor, like, what can, what can somebody bring to your organization? Realness. Realness. You have, you have to really, 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 really care about the kids, and that's so cliche, because, I mean, it's like you going for a job interview, everybody gonna say, I care about the job, I care, <laughs> but really, I I put that to the side, I say be real, because that's what kids draw to. Any young people, they they can smell it a mile away, I don't know what it is, something about young people, they know if you're yeah. real. I mean, don't come trying to get paid, come with an open heart and an mm-hmm. open mind to teach somebody. Yeah, and, and don't be a, afraid. If you're afraid to share your story, then a lot of times it'll be hard to connect with kids, uh, with young people in general. Like, you got to be, be, be open. Like, you can't, I can't say I'm a mentor child, and they tell me they smoking weed and having sex, and I'm like, oh, no, you don't want to do that. Like, oh, what? I, I, I haven't smoked weed before, but that's another thing. But I came like, oh, no, don't have sex. Like, sex is everywhere. Mm-hmm. So how can we just teach you to make better choices? Okay, if you're going to have sex, that's something I can't control or stop. All right, do you know where you can go to get checked out? Let's find the nearest clinic. Have you talked to your parents about these steps you want to make? Do you know where you can get condoms? That's how you, you know, become a, a good person or a role model to young people. Not trying to stop them from doing things they're going to do already, but guide them and give them resources. Mm-hmm. Well, since you want you on some hot topics, let's just go right in. Let's go. Let's dig in. Well, if, <laughs> the, for the parents that's listening, if you got kids, I need you to give them three. You have been dealing with trouble team at <laughs> children. Give the people three tips they can do to, I guess, better their relationships with the smaller children that they're dealing with. Okay, disclaimer, I don't have a child myself. (laughs) I know people say, you don't understand if you don't have kids. Uh, I forgot the coach at Gremlin. I forgot his name. But he never played football for a team, period. And he's one of the top football coaches in the nation. And that's at HBCU. Anyway, that's beside the point. I love sports. But he sent a lot of people to the NFL. (laughs) Like I'm saying, but he, yes, he never, he never played football himself. But anyway, like I'm saying, um, one, before you get started, I just had it. It was on my mind. The fact that she, do out some football knowledge. She's sitting here with two guys, and we both. I'm in here lost. I'm telling y'all right now. I don't know who <laughs> nah, she's talking about. I don't know I his don't name. I don't personally though. know who yeah. she's talking about. He's I'm bad with names too, but he's been man. the coach of Grambling forever. I think he passed away. Yeah, he did. He did. Oh, okay. Yes, he passed that. away. Mm-hmm. He retired that. and passed away. Eddie, Eddie, Eddie something. I, know I, know I can't remember. But okay, Robertson, <laughs> I think last name Robertson. But um. I say, like I said before, you have to be real with your kids, mm-hmm. open up and explain to them what you went through. Because a lot of times your kids are a reflection of you. So what they probably go through is something you went through at, at uh, their age. So be real, be open. So um, it's okay, I guess, any time. If the kid brings to you, that door is open. It's not no, well, I'll have to wait till you're a little bit older to explain it to you. Because some, some things, I mean, kids now are learning things way earlier. Smart. Than mm-hmm. You know, when we learn them. So 
if your six year old, seven year old approach you, be like, hey, mom, what, tell me about sex or tell me about what they say is blowjob or something like that, you mm-hmm. like, whoa, be like, okay, what do you do as a parent? You don't just open up and be like, well, this is what it is. And just <laughs> I, I think you should tell them what it is because. If they don't get it from you, they're going to get it from school. No, that's right. Now, I get it from the streets. streets. I do agree yeah. with, it, with that. But it has to be a way for you to deliver this information well, yeah, appropriately. You, you can deliver it appropriately, but here's the thing. If you, it's your parents. So this is, y'all have the same genetic makeup. This is somebody who you live with. So nine times out of ten, if you the one they come to and you share with them and you tell them from right from wrong, they're going to listen to you first before the streets. But if you push them away, I don't want to hear. I want to talk about it. Or if you lie to them, then they're gonna go to the streets. Mm -hmm. Because you don't. When you disappoint somebody that you care about, and you lie, everybody know that. It's just like if I lie to you, you'll feel different than your wife or your girlfriend, because y'all share something. So if that's if you a parent, you share something with your child that that's a bond. You're gonna have to tell the truth. You're gonna have to be real. Because at the end of the day, if you are your word is gone. Yeah. That's, that's really it. I don't really have any tips or anything like that. It's just that, man, whoever you influence, and if you have a bun with them, be honest, be real with them. And really, you can get anybody to do what you want them to do yeah. by being real and honest. And being a genuine person. A man. genuine person. And yep. That, that is a big thing with kids, though. Just like sitting up here thinking about it, like kids do tend to gravitate to somebody they feel like that's actually listening to them and not shoving them away because there's a lot of yep. people listen to the wrong people just because they're there to listen mm-hmm. you, know I mean? you know what i mean that's the only people that they got to talk to that's true that's why we see when kids they gravitate towards these people in the streets because they actually listened yeah you know that there was a shoulder to lean on i mean they might have been the wrong shoulder but at the end of the day they actually listened and i actually i blame the og I actually blame my OGs and all the old heads on certain things because, I mean, all my old heads, they weren't telling me to go do the wrong things. They do this and being this all funny. They were trying to, you know, kind of guide me to things. But now it's kids raising kids, so we kind of get lost in translation with that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you have so many old heads that don't want to grow up. They still think they're kids. That is a, that's a whole nother topic <laughs> from you childish old heads. They out here 45 still thinking they 25. Well, I'm thinking social media is raising everybody now. True. Social media is. Social media is a beast. Yeah. All by itself, man. Like, yeah. It, it changes the, the whole way that we do things today. Yeah, exactly. In a good way and a bad way. I mean, because social media, I think it's did a lot of positive things, too. I mean, but at the end of the day, it's so much negative on there. Yeah. Everything is negative. You're going to get 150 likes on some negative. Let you say something about God, you might get two. Two, likes. three likes. <laughs> <laughs> that's real. Well. But not to take away from your whole interview for the thing that's going on. Like, I really, the whole, like, I really like the idea of you taking and being able to take kids out of the country. That's real you know, big. Like, that's real that's big. big you know, it's our people, second year. People yep. with money that's taking people out of the country. So yeah. is it just you or do you have a team? No, we have a team. So we have volunteers sign up if they want to go on the trip so we can have that um, uh, accountability. We have (laughs) chaperones, you know. Yeah, Yeah, but it, I mean. Because you definitely don't want to lose a kid. No, you don't. You you don't, you don't. But we we, we make sure, we make sure that everybody's accounted for. how can I put this? Also, it's kind of like a vetting system. We make sure that the people do, that do come with us a lot of times are in education. They have background checks. We're talking about good people who work with kids already because we don't want to take people out there just because they want to go on a trip and, it's, and they never spend time with kids <laughs> for a past an hour. Nah, you might not want to sign up for this. You're going gonna to get a little frustrated. Like yeah, it might not yeah, be for you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but we we have a great time. So what um do you throw like any events here in Houston? Oh yes. To get involved with? Of course we have. Well, right now uh, I'm wearing it now. I brought you one. It's out there. I bought you guys a Kiss My Ambition shirt. Mm-hmm. When I first started Cherry on Top at the high school, 
the kids would help me with designing shirts and apparel because we was like, how are we going to raise funds? Of course, everybody was like, T-shirts, T-shirts, T-shirts. So um, on the Black Market Friday, every once, once in a month, the Black Market hosts the vending events, and Cherry on Top will be there. So that's this Friday. That's tomorrow. We'll be selling the Kiss My Ambition shirt, so we asking for you to come on out and purchase you one. I brought you guys. I brought one. I ain't know, you know, let you if you want one, twenty dollars for the second one. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I did for you. <laughs> Hold on, what size is it? What size is it? It's a large. Okay, that's I'm you. in there. Yes, yeah, I'm in there. So make sure you wear. I'm wear. About to purchase mine. <laughs> yeah. It's so all good. It's March all good. 2nd, we have a meditation. That's for the entire community. We meditate at Discovery Green, March 2nd at 9 a.m. We're going to come out. We're going to listen to a guided meditation. It's going to say things like, I am powerful. I am smart. We're going to listen to that. We're going to eat some good food, fruits, and veggies, and write about our dreams. And that's all ages. Come on out to Discovery Green. It's going to be beautiful. On the 2nd. What else we have coming up? We have cooking class. We have we teach the kids cooking classes. On that will be March the twenty third, and that's from four thirty to seven at Marshall Middle School. Anybody can come out to that. Now, with certain events, would they have to go online and sign up, or like you said, you can just go ahead and come out? It's open community event. Okay, cool. Just come on out. Put the flies up. Come on out, everybody. That means just come out, people. You yep. ain't got to do no research. You ain't got to <laughs> think too hard on it. Just come mm -hmm. and enjoy yourselves and learn something. Because we don't want people to feel like you have to be something to show up. Yeah. And I, I know a lot of times registration, everything. We're a microwave society now. So my thing is, how can we make everything accessible and quick where you don't have to sign up and do all this stuff yes. unless we charge it? Mm -hmm. If we charge it, of course you register and purchase. Yeah. But if it's free, just show up. That's for real. Yeah. And again, you're kicking it with Jim Renegade on 92 Kills. Before we get up out of here, I want you, we have Ms. Sharia Quarles in here. Yes. From Cherry on Top Youth Center Incorporated. Yes. Before we leave, tell the people one more time where your social media links and where they can find any okay. information on your organization. Okay. Okay. Uh on Instagram, you can follow us on Cherry on Top Youth Center. For our website, you can go to C H E R R I E on top.org. That's Cherry on Top.org. If you want to follow my personal page, it's Miss Sharia underscore Q. Did I say that right? Miss underscore. Miss underscore Sharia Q. You can follow me on there. Facebook, Sharia Quarles. Facebook, Cherry on Top Youth Center. Kick it, kick, kick, yeah. <laughs>